today I'm joined by Emma, one of our amazing Sleep Any consultants. Now, Emma is a mum of two boys. And um, before sleep consulting, Emma worked in recruitment. So a completely different work life that she had then with two little boys as well. Um, so we're going to talk to Emma, find out more about her journey and how sleep consulting has changed her life. And of course, all the other people that she's impacted as well. So welcome, Emma. Hi. Thank you. It's great to have you. So, so Emma, tell me, what motivated you to become a childhood sleep consultant? Well, um, as you said, I spent 15 years in recruitment and um, I loved it. But then when I had my family, my two little boys, I just decided, I guess like most mums, one, I didn't want to be working full time. I wanted to be around for them, especially when they were little. Um, and also I just, I just felt like I couldn't do the, the role of recruitment part time and also there was still excessive stress with doing that. And I just really wanted to be able to do something that I loved and enjoyed, but that didn't impact my family time as well. Um, that alongside with the fact that I also experienced the sleep deprivation that young children can bring with my youngest. Um, and that I guess is what made me look into sleep consulting as a career it was really kind of but, you know, it become it, it is a minefield when you don't know and just having experienced it myself and knowing that I could potentially do something to help others really piqued my interest. Definitely. I love that. I think it's such a, I mean, my story's really similar and, and just having been through it yourself, been there and knowing that it can be better, it really does make you want to kind of shout that from the rooftops and, and share that with as many people as possible so they don't have to go through that pain unnecessarily. I love that. So when you started out, did you have a particular plan for how you wanted to work um, around, your, around your boys? Well, I think, to be honest with you, it was really just more, no specific plan, but more that I just wanted to be around for them. So I, my, my um, oldest was about to start school the next year when I embarked on this as a career. So I knew for sure I wanted to be around to do pick up and drop off most of the time, you know, like if there was school plays, if there was stuff I needed to go to, I wanted to know that I could have the flexibility to do that and not be stressing about it, it not be one of those that, you know, oh no, I've got to take more time off and speak to my boss and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to be able to control my own time so that I could be there for my children when I wanted to be. So that was the plan really, have that flexibility, which is what it's done. Right, it has. So how soon do you feel like that plan came together once you started? Was it pretty much straight away? Have you been able to control your work schedule as you'd like to or did it take a bit of practice to get into? Oh, to be honest, Lucy, it was straight away. So it was, you amazing. know, the, the feeling was just amazing to have that control of my day, um, to be able to straight away, ha you know, have that impact of being around for the kids, doing what I needed to do, you know, like, I think it takes a bit of practice to structure your own day as well. Um, but yeah, it, the the impact was immediate and it was fantastic really like a weight lifted to be honest with you great that must have felt so good so do you feel like um beyond obviously obviously that felt great for you you felt like you were doing something that you wanted to be doing you could be there for them mm -hmm. how has that made a difference to them do you think you, you know family life your husband your kids like all around how how has that made a difference yeah i think that in, for everyone it's just taken away a layer of stress that I think you know quite often families do experience anyway when you know mum and dad are trying to negotiate who does this and that and um, you know my husband has his own business as well which is quite young and so he's putting in a lot of hours um, so you know it was really good to be able to he can do he does what he can do but there's no pressure and stress on him because i'm saying well i can't do this because i have to be in my role at x x x time so um that straight away for us was great and i think also for the kids you know they just 
because you're not stressing and you're not half present you're there with them you know when I'm there I'm with them you know I'm fully present so hopefully I think that you know they're young they're three and five but I think they enjoy that you know when mummy is here she is and I'm not constantly thinking oh god I've got to do this I've got a call to take um that kind of thing so I just make sure that Mm -hmm. I structure it so that we all benefit I love that it's nice to be you when you're mum you're fully mum and if you're at work you can be focused at work and I think but it's also nice for them to grow up seeing that that you do do something beyond just cater for them 24 7 and that you know mum has um a purpose as well and she does something and I think kiddies often especially when they go to school they're quite proud of what their parents do and they like to understand what you do and how that makes a difference in the world and I think that's a lovely thing for them to see especially to see women um doing something like with purpose I think it's, it's great for them to see that it's a good it's a good role model position to be in yeah no, it's so, that's so true. And in fact, my oldest has a, just recently, so he's five, and he literally about six months ago is like, "What is? What do you do, mummy?" You know, and, and actually wanted to understand a bit more about what I do. And they both know that if I'm in a certain room, that I'm doing my work and that kind of thing. Yeah. So as you say, it's great. It's good. It I love that. So when it comes to the, your your role as a sleep consultant, what do you most enjoy? about it i'm sure like with anything there's there's highs and lows there's challenges and there's great bits but what do you feel what do you most enjoy gosh well i mean you say there's highs and lows but actually i enjoy so much about this so i mean the obvious is having been there myself having been through that sleep deprivation and i waited till my youngest was nearly one before i asked for help and during that time i went through postnatal depression i had you know it's a real battle and i think just knowing that i'm able to help people come out of that um i mean that is the best feeling ever you can't top that you know <laughs> um but also you know feeling like you are you're, you're not just helping them get out of that particular situation yes you're helping them that have that immediate impact but you're also coaching them educating them empowering them i mean i've got parents who come back to me now and say oh i was on a chat and i Um, I was saying, you know, someone was saying they dropped their naps at a year and a half and I, you know, put on there, they probably still need a nap and, you know, people are spread, so you're helping sort of spread the word that the whole sleep deprivation, yes, you might not necessarily get the sleep you used to when your children are young, but you can definitely help them sleep well. Yeah, it's amazing that ripple effect that it has when you help somebody and then they try and impart, uh, impart a bit of that wisdom on and so on. And yeah, yeah, definitely. It's lovely to see the bigger impact. Yeah, no, it's so rewarding. I agree. So in your sleep consulting career, is there one particular challenge or you know what's a big challenge you feel you faced whether that's um, a family's particular challenge or just for you in in your own you know juggling and and business so what what do you feel has been a big challenge yeah I think um, initially like any change you know that's starting off setting up um, as and as much as the benefit of controlling your own time and your own day there's also the (laughs) What comes with that is making sure you do control, you know, manage your time, manage your day and working from home. I'm sure lots of people can relate, especially at the moment. It's very easy to be distracted by other stuff, (laughs) put the washing out and do this and make the beds and, oh, I'll just, you know, do that in so-and-so's room. So it really, I think for me, it was really trying to make sure that I myself managed my day so I wasn't distracted so I had you know and and actually the training that we did with you Lucy you covered this quite well um you know with kind of I think you used the um is it the rocks and sand analogy you know have the have the big things done and then you can do the other bits around it but um you know now I know I know what my weaknesses are so I kind of know that okay I'll get x y z out of the way at the start of the day and then I can focus on the stuff I need to focus on so yes there was definitely an element of and I think it is constantly ongoing because you know things change and there's always different 
elements of life that spring up and need your attention but um yeah probably the biggest challenge was just making sure that i got my focus correct and also on the flip side of that was trying to switch off a little bit as well i think when you feel really passionate about something and you know you're talking to families and they might have had a rough day or a rough night and you're you're still thinking about that so it was it's it's trying to find that balance of being really involved but also being able to kind of switch off when you need to as well yeah i think i think that's a common you're not the first person to say that and i think it's a common problem with us you know passionate entrepreneurs as women because we're so good at getting lots of stuff done and juggling lots of balls we can it, it can be hard to put them down <laughs> can't it and you just think oh I'll just do this thing and i'll just do that thing um but yeah that i think that is a big challenge it is is taking a taking a break and and stepping back but I love how you said that you um, know your weaknesses so you can spot things like that so I always say if you spot it you've got it because if you don't know your weaknesses if you don't know that you're prone to going down a rabbit hole every time an email or notification comes up or you know you go to Facebook to get a contact and you find yourself scrolling for 20 minutes and but if you know that's a weakness you can catch yourself out and you can question yourself and go hang on Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing and, and, and quickly get yourself back on course? So if you spot it, you've got it and you can you can overcome it quite quickly. So um, this, yeah, it's a great thing to know, know those things. We all have them. <laughs> it's just working, yeah. working through them. So yeah, you know, that's I like brilliant. that. I like that saying as well. If you spot it, you've got it. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's reassuring as well because it yeah. kind of makes you think, OK, I tripped up there, but I've spotted it. So it, I've, I've learned from that, which means I, yeah. can, I won't do that again. And, and you just get better and better at it. Um, so I remember you celebrating your business's first year anniversary, which was a really exciting and momentous like, point in the calendar. Why do you think you had such a successful first year? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I think... Probably um, there was an element of when I, so after I'd finished the training, got qualified, I didn't go straight into starting the business. I finished off, I carried on doing my, the, the part-time recruitment I was doing for a couple of months, which gave me some time, I think, to really kind of sit back, focus, look at a bit of a business plan. Again, something I know you recommended at, at the time. Um, and just, so I knew what kind of, what I was aiming for, what my goals were, you know, like the start of anything is can be quite um, <laughs> can be quite uh, challenging and terrifying. So um, if you give yourself some goals and some structure, then I think that can always help. Um, so that, along with um, then kind of being able to reflect back on that. So once I started, I felt like I was quite prepared. Um, kind of launched myself into it um and then really got out there um spoke to as many people as possible i think having the the support of obviously yourself as well as our coach and mentor makes a big difference gets you over that imposter syndrome at the start um and uh and yeah just really trying to i think on the days where you might struggle trying to focus trying to look at the positives that you've got and i think having a plan and having goals helps with that because you can go well look i've got i've got this far so you know i've achieved something i might be having a bad day or a bad week but it's okay it you know keep at it keep consistency something we say to our families but i think it applies to uh, to business as well you know you've got to kind of keep getting out there all the all the different things that we do to kind of reach out to people so i think by and large that's probably the main things yeah that have helped great me. i think you're right and let's that yeah that planning and preparation um obviously yeah got you set up with some great foundations and i agree i think that having you know coaches mentors community people around you um that get it and that can continue to guide you in, in whatever format but that support is really key i think in any um in any business or any role i think you need an aspect of that somewhere um 
to, to keep you going, particularly in a role that you work from home and that it's your business, you know, it's solo, the buck stops with you. And so actually knowing you've got a wider community and a network around you, um, I think makes all of the difference. And, you know, sometimes someone will just say one thing and it, it sparks a thought or it lifts you or it just takes you into another place, which you don't realize, but three days later you do something and it was all because of just this one thing you heard. And so I think, yeah, that connectivity um, yeah. is, is crucial for anyone um, building a business on their own. So that's yeah. amazing. And what a great first year you had as well. And on to the next like I think it's um it's always yeah always growing yeah definitely. so do you have um anything in particular that you dream of achieving with your sleep consultant business like what would be a huge win for you I think for me like the future looks like so my youngest goes to school next year so currently I do sort of two to three days on average a week I mean that kind of is up and down and it's split over a week but um I would like to get to the point where this is you know this is full time for me um so that I can really so you know generate enough business that it is full time for me um have you know start to get like you have Lucy get recognized in in certain industries you know be, be the person people talk about and go oh yeah yeah absolutely you know I get get referrals which is great but you know that's having a, a real stream of that a consistent stream of people going yes you must go and speak to Emma if you've got problems um with your sleep and I think also sometimes those wins are quite personal as well so for me I I to get to the point where I could go, right, we're going to go on holiday and I'm going to book it and I'm going to be able to do that and, you know, treat my husband and my children to a holiday that I've been able to finance, you know, and I really feel like that is something that I will be able to do in the future. You know, have that independence in terms of mum can treat you and we can do things and, you know I've got the finances to be able to do it I think that's brilliant I think that's brilliant. and and it's a great goal to have and having them um, whenever you you reach a certain milestone I think it's great to reward yourself whether that's with a gift for yourself or a gift for somebody else but the fact that you you kind of mark it with a I couldn't have done this but I can and I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy this either giving or receiving or something special and I have certain targets too like oh if I hit that target there's a the particular thing I'd like to treat myself to and you know I've things like, oh, I'm going to get that for my husband's birthday because I can, because yeah. I've, I've worked hard and I, I've achieved that goal. So I think that's lovely. And um, yeah, definitely the, the booking or booking a holiday for the family or that buying that gift. I think it's a really lovely way to celebrate the success um, that you've, you've earned and achieved. So mm. I love that. That's brilliant. It's great to have those, those goals. Definitely. Yeah. It's motivating as well, isn't it? When you've got goals so, and you've got things to head to aim for you know it keeps you going on those on those days where you might not feel quite as motivated as others and it's something to strive for isn't it absolutely definitely it helps you remember why you're doing it in the first place mm -hmm. otherwise you can yeah you can get bogged up sit down and be so in the trenches that you forget actually hang on why am I doing this? What's this all about? And, you know, obviously day to day, the wins and the rewards of helping people is great. But when you can then bring that back to, to you as well, and, and actually you, you earn something more than just a monetary income, but you earn even more from what you put out there. And I think that's, yeah, that's great. Definitely. So, I mean, I love having these conversations and it's been brilliant chatting with you. And I'm sure we've got people listening who um, have enjoyed getting to know you and your story and how you came into this and what it is that you do um, and getting to know the Emma um, underneath that sleep consultant title. And so if people are listening and they're thinking, Emma is the person for me, I really want to connect with her, see how she can help me. And where can they connect with you? How are they, how can they best? find you Emma okay so I'm on um so on Facebook I'm on Instagram so I'm 
Bliss, at Blissful Bedtime UK on Facebook and Instagram. I also have a website which is blissfulbedtime.co.uk um, and then all my contact details will be on all of those three areas and of course I'm also on your on your website as well Lucy. Yeah amazing well we'll drop the links in as well so people can find those easily connect with you and i know they can always schedule a call and have a chat with you if they want to just Absolutely. just speak to you personally and, and just see if it if it's a good fit because i know sometimes people feel like well i don't know if my problem is just something no one can solve and i i always think come on bring it on give us the challenge we'll <laughs> let you know if we can and then we will tell you completely straight if it's beyond her or not but the chances are she will have an answer for you and if you don't ask you don't know so um we'll put those links in so people can reach out and connect with you and um hopefully then um you know they can have that conversation with you directly which will be which would be great but thank you so so much for joining us and, and having this conversation today it's been really lovely to talk with you oh it's been my pleasure thank you so much for asking me lucy it's been really nice no, you're welcome we'll talk to you soon thanks so much for watching if you've liked anything about this episode then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this if any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.